homeschool dad. There are millions of homeschool parents in this country. I think the number is four million right now. And there are millions more who are looking for education reform. Now, I don't know how many of you heard about the ruling in California a month ago. Raise your hands. You know about the ruling about homeschooling? Yeah. Basically, they criminalized homeschooling. They made it a crime to homeschool your children. Now, in Nevada, where I'm from, they had a poll, a very interesting poll. They asked all the parents who sent their kids to public school, if you had a choice and if you had the money, would you send your children to public school or would you send them to private school, parochial school, homeschool, or charter school? 90% answered something other than public school. 90%. The other interesting thing that happened in Nevada is the headline just a few days ago was about a new math test we're giving all our graduating seniors in high school. And they just took it now. They have to take it in May, but they wanted to do it now to see how they do so they could see what they have to, you know, what subjects they have to study to pass it in, when it finally happens in May. 80% of all Nevada seniors failed the most basic math test you could ever get to get out of high school. So here's a judge in California saying, we have absolutely no choice. Parents don't even own your own children. He literally said they're owned by the state. That's almost the exact words he used. I'm paraphrasing. He basically said, your children belong to the state. And he said, the job of the state is to educate your children, not your job. And the job of the state is to get your children educated by state certified teachers only. And we want your children, the job of the state is to make sure your children are taught uh, basically, the words he said were manners, loyalty to the state, and patriotism. Now, I don't know about you, but to me that sounds a little like Soviet-era Russia. I don't know about you, but to me that sounds like the gulag. It sounds like our public schools, they're finally admitting, are nothing more than propaganda camps. It's very sad, it's very depressing, and it should worry every person in this room that that's what they have in mind. Our schools and our children aren't owned by us anymore. They're owned unfortunately, by teachers' unions. That's the problem. And I have nothing against teachers. Maybe there's a teacher in this room. All the, ki all the people that teach my children, homeschool them, are teachers. You know, we have tutors come in who are retired public school teachers who live in Las Vegas, and we put an ad in the paper, and they come in and teach my kids every day, one-on-one, -on -one, and they're fantastic. One of them is like a grandmother to my kids. It's not teachers that are a problem. It's teachers' unions who don't give a crap about children. See, I'm a candidate that just says what's on his mind. They don't give a crap about kids. They give a crap about raising the money for the teachers that give, contribute, at gunpoint to the union. They have no choice. They have to give to the union. And the union wants to get them more money. And the union wants to hire more administrators and more principals at bigger salaries. But nobody cares about the kids. And the fact is, homeschool kids in this country score far higher on every exam during high school and entrance exams, SAT exams to get in college, far higher, an average of 35 points higher on the SATs than do public school children. So we, we can have an argument here, a healthy argument. Someone could say, I like public school, I support public school. But the one thing you can't do is tell me hearing those statistics, number one, that you know it is your kid, you have a right to do what you want with your children, don't you? And the parents who homeschool their kids are the ones who care. They're the ones who want something better for their kids. So the one thing you can't argue about is, can you imagine a judge ruling that you're a criminal if you choose to homeschool your children, even though the scores are much higher for the homeschool kids than the ones who he wants to demand at gunpoint be sent to public schools? One other study you should know about just came out, and that was across the entire United States. It's a, it's a crisis. Almost 50% of kids in urban minority areas drop out of high school. They don't ever get through high school. That's because you're forcing them to go to public schools. Why aren't we saying there's a choice? We'll give you a voucher. You can either take that 6,000 a year or 8,000 a year to educate your children that we, we force you know, public schools to spend 8,000 a year, say, on students in California. Well, we'll give you that aid, and you can decide whether you want to send your kids to a public school, a private school, home school, parochial school, Catholic school, Jewish school, or a charter school. You should be able to decide. It's your children. Isn't there something called freedom in this country? So I think these are issues we went on. That's another group I bring to this party, homeschool parents. And now here's the last one, and probably the most important one. And you'll laugh at a world filled with war and high taxes and big government, lots of issues, health care, immigration, all important issues. You're not going to think poker is a big issue, but it is a big issue. It's what it represents that's a big issue. 
there's 10 to 12 million online poker enthusiasts in the United States. And every single, they're all over. When I was on the radio in San Diego last night, the guy said to me, what's the trigger that's going to get people to finally not vote for the two parties? And I said, you're going to think I'm nuts. The trigger is online poker. And the guy laughed, and he hesitated for about three seconds on the radio, and he said, this is so bizarre. He said, I don't even know what you're talking about, but there are five young PAs, production assistants, in my radio show who are all holding their hands up, and they're all saying, that guy's great, that guy's great. Every young kid in college in the United States plays poker until all hours of night. That's what they do. And they all want to play online poker. And the U.S. government made it illegal, just like that judge with homeschooling. See, here's the problem in our country. As libertarians, isn't this what we believe? What it really comes down to is, I may not like what you like, but it's none of my business to tell you what to do with your life. You know, you do what you want with your life. Let me give you an example. I'm going to fight harder than anybody in the world to legalize pot, but I've never smoked pot in my whole life. I'm not a drug guy. I'm a health nut. I work out two hours a day, pop 100 vitamin pills, and eat organic food. I would never take a drug. I would never put a foreign substance in my body. But I will fight like an animal to legalize marijuana in this country because it's ludicrous that 800,000 people a year go to prison. 800,000, not for being dealers, not for hurting somebody, for possession of, of marijuana? That's insane. <coughs> We're wrecking people's lives over a choice that's no different than choosing to drink a beer. That's crazy. So poker is another thing that's just like that. Poker, it's not that they banned it that matters, it's that what it represents. It represents a violation of internet freedom. It represents the fact that anyone in this room, in your own house, in your own bedroom, on your own computer, with your own money, can play poker, and your neighbor would never know about it, and it would never hurt them, yet the busybodies in Congress thought it was such an important issue that they would ban it. Now, if they'll ban your ability to play something as stupid as poker, can you imagine what other control they want over your life? So that's one reason it's important. Second reason it's important is there's 10 to 12 million people that play online poker, and in that world, I'm a very big celebrity. For those of you who don't know, I have built my life. I built my life on TV. And my show is called Wayne Allen Roots Winning Edge. I've been on TV for 20 years. Well, actually, nine years is Wayne Allen Roots Winning Edge. And before that, I've been on TV a total of 22 years. Always the star of television gambling shows. I have a following of millions of people. In my, just in my office is a database of two million men. It's all men who play both poker and sports gambling. So the ladies in the room, don't feel bad if you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Guys love to bet on sports. It's the joy of a guy's life. There's no point in watching the Super Bowl if you don't have $1,000 on it. It's just meaningless. That's what it's about. Guys want that freedom, and it's not hurting anybody, unless you know they're addicted to gambling. That's a different story. But the point is, two million men have called for my advice since 1991. Two million men. I have their names, their addresses, their phone numbers. They're fans of mine. I created, produced, and hosted a show called King of Vegas on Spike TV uh, in 2006. It had over a million viewers, which by cable standards is a big hit, and that was my baby, and, and poker players watched that show. So this whole audience knows me. In the last three days, four of the biggest poker players in the world have come out and endorsed me for president, and they've all written very big checks for me. For those of you who know poker, and I see there's a few guys who seem to know it a little bit, uh, I was endorsed by Greg Fossilman Raymer, who won the 2004 World Series of Poker. A few ladies thinking how insignificant that is. He won the World Series of Poker, and he got $5 million for that. That's pretty significant. Uh, he's one of the best poker players in the world. Phil Gordon just endorsed me today. Phil Gordon has hosted all the poker shows on Bravo and on ESPN, and he's won many tournaments. But more importantly, he's also a small businessman and an entrepreneur. Brilliant guy. I think he graduated MIT, started a business, and sold out about five years ago for $180 million. So Phil plays poker and gives all his money to charity because it means nothing to it. So Phil just wrote me a, a very nice check. Um, Oklahoma Johnny Hale, who literally created the Poker Players Hall of Fame and was the first member inducted into it, just endorsed me. And Mike the Mouth Matisau, who's known as one of the most high-profile <laughs> poker players in the world, uh, and the only poker player in the world that twice made the final table at the World Series of Poker, just endorsed me. So it, it may sound odd and it may sound small and